Good morning and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 23rd of September 2019 and the time has just gone 11.55 British summer time. And it's been a fairly weak start to the European trading session. Uh, if you look at what happened in the US at the back end of the last week, uh, the Dow and the S&P closed in the red and that was partially driven by the fact that US-China trade talks were continuing in the US, they were constructive, they were... They were um, they were, they were um, productive, but they ended abruptly. Uh, they ended, and the, the Chinese delegates, trade delegates, went home earlier than originally planned, and that sent out the wrong message uh, in the market. So we did, we did and a slightly negative finish to the U.S. stock market session back on Friday. There was a bit of there was a bit of that hanging over the beginning of the European session today, and then that was really compounded by the fact. We had poor uh, manufacturing and service figures out of both France and Germany, who are obviously the two largest economies in the Eurozone. Uh, the, the, the figures were posted to Insights. Insights can be found on our, on our trading platform here. If you click under News and Analysis, second option down is Insights. It was posted here. The French figures came out. Um, I've just got 8.15 this morning. So you can see here the French uh, flash manufacturing for September came in at 50.3 well below the, uh, the expectation and it was a decline on the month as well. For the services figures that are France, it came in at 51.6, also below expectation and also a steady, steady decline on the month. Now get ready for the worst one of, of the, uh, the morning session was out of Germany. Uh, the German flash manufacturing reading came in at 41.4, well below the expectation of 44 and it was a sharp decline from the 43.5 that was registered in uh, in August, uh, today's the, the today's update the 44.4 reading was the weakest in over a decade. So the German manufacturing sector has been in decline all the way throughout 2019, and now we're at the weakest point in over 10 years. So it gives an indication of how the global economy is changing, and that that ties in with the U.S.-China trade story. If the two largest economies in the world are having a trade spat, you're going to have ripple out effects, and we're seeing that. And these poor numbers today from the from France, from Germany, really confirm or vindicate rather um, the reason why the European Central Bank cut the deposit rate further in the negative territory and announced a stimulus and a bond buying scheme. And they also made calls for fiscal stimulus as well. So it really shows you the the, the trouble uh, that's that's in the eurozone. Adding to that, um, the UK is set to leave the European Union. For the time being, it's looking like uh, a no deal is a possibility, and given what's going on in mainland Europe and in the Eurozone, the last thing that region needs is a no deal Brexit. So that's also playing into um, the slowdown in the German and French economies. I'll take a look now at the weekend article on our website, uh, and then after that, we will then look at some charts. So if you go to cfcmarkets.com and under insights, and then click, and then on, under news analysis, you will find. Uh, most of the updates that myself and my uh, analyst colleagues do. So, looking ahead um, to tomorrow and Tuesday, we have the German IFO numbers. That's going to be of interest in light of the dreadful manufacturing numbers out of Germany this morning. Tomorrow, well, tomorrow um, it, it was the Thomas Kirk the travel crowd uh, were, were supposed to have their fourth quarter update. It is worth noting over the weekend the company did go into an administration. Uh, so, and, it's, and there's an article covering that here on our website as well, talking about how the um, Thomas Cook share price, the curtain comes down. So obviously, um, that's, um, the, the travel sector is going to remain in focus. We saw the likes of Tui uh, and Ryanair do quite well on the back of that, of the demise, the fortune demise of uh, Thomas Cook today. Uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, we have US consumer confidence. That's going to be of interest given that the US-China trade standoff has gotten worse and worse in terms of tariffs being imposed. Um, so at some point that is likely to kind of eat into consumer confidence in the US. Um, tying in with that as well, uh, we first quarter figure results from Nike. Uh, on Wednesday we have first half figures from Boohoo. Um, on Wednesday we have the Reserve Bank of New Zealand interest rate decision. Uh, on Thursday we have the final reading of the second quarter of US GDP. On Thursday we have fourth quarter figures from Mitchells and Butlers, the pub crowd. And on Thursday, we have third quarter numbers from Carnival, the uh, the cruise operator. So let's take a look now at the FTSE 100. I'll run through some, some charts now, covering the most popular markets. As I mentioned, it's been a negative start to the major indices, major European uh, indices and European stock markets. So 
FTSE 100 had obviously had a fairly like global stock markets had a fairly severe sell-off uh, in late July into August, but the market has been recovering. But that recovery is is kind of a bit full of, of um of, is um. There's some kind of questions over the recovery. The market failed to kind of, you know, head up towards 7,400. We've been hanging on in this area for quite some for a number of days now. As long as we hold above the 20 moving average, this red line here, which comes into play at around the 70, 72, 20 there, thereabouts. As long as we hold above that, it's likely that we could see a push higher from August continue. And if we do press higher, we could be looking at targeting 7,400 and then beyond that. Up to 7,470. If, however, the market does manage to turn lower and we do have a size of break below uh, the eternity moving average, then we, we could be thinking about heading back towards uh, towards this zone here, down around the 7,040 mark. I take a look now. What's going on over in Germany? As I mentioned uh, at the very top of the video, um, German market is in a fairly poor state in light of those. Pretty dreadful manufacturing numbers. Alex, it does sound as though the signals from the Chinese so just waiting now for the um, uh, take a look what's going on the DAX. So the DAX had a fairly sizable pullback between bounce back between late uh, so mid August up running through into mid September. So a whole month of almost a fairly decent rally. Um, the market has obviously this is quite a red candle here, quite sizable um, indication of the, the, the sell off we've seen today. But it still remains in, in upward trend. Um, we're currently north of, of 12,300, and if you can continue above the, continue to hold above that metric, we can, we can be retesting the, the recent highs here achieved in the middle of September. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking like heading up towards uh, 12,600, and beyond that, up towards 12,660. If we do have a, a decent a size of break below 12,300. We could be looking ahead back down towards this yellow line here, the 100 day moving average. And we can see in a few occasions that particular metric has acted as both well, uh, a support on a couple of times in the last few months. So the possibility that metric might act as support in the future, although there are no guarantees. And that comes into play at 12,115. And if you go below that, uh, then keep an eye out for the psychologically important 12,000 metric. Uh, that, that area, we saw, some, we saw quite a bit of consolidation around 12,000 in the last few months. So there's a possibility that that metric could be of importance in the future. Now we'll turn our attention now to the U.S. markets, starting off with the Dow Jones, and the U.S. markets are in better shape uh, than their European counterparts. So they've also suffered declines um, very recently, but at the same time, the highs that they were achieved in the U.S. markets were not too far away from their all-time highs, so they're in better shape going into this, this more recent bout of selling. As you can see here, the highs that were achieved um, in mid-September we're not a million miles away from the all-time highs here on the, on the Dow Jones. Uh, we obviously finished in the red on Friday. We, we, we appear set to be up looking for a slightly negative start to the U.S. session today. Uh, if you take a look at the, if you, if you note the downward tr price action in the last few sessions, and that's, we, we can see from positive, look at the, at the MACD histogram, MACD indicator. We can see here that positive momentum is in decline. So the downward move in stocks to be confirmed by the decline in positive momentum. So we could be looking at heading back down towards 12,800 or perhaps this, this blue line here, the 50 moving average, which comes into play at 20, 26,580. And if we go beyond that, the 100 day moving average, this yellow line at 26,356. We can see that, that these um, moving averages, both of them, do have a history of not too long ago acting as support. And if they've acted as support in the past, it makes it more likely that they will do so in the future. But it is worth noting that the market has been bouncing back uh, for over a month now, and if you continue to kind of press on higher from here, it could be like heading back up towards uh, 27,000, then north of 27,200, and if you go beyond that, we're then towards this, this zone here in around 27,400. Right, take a look on the S&P 500. It's a fairly similar situation to the S&P 500, whereby the highs that were achieved in the middle of the month were not too far away from the all, from the all time highs. As you can see here, we have been um, we have seen a few a few red candles uh, in the last couple of days. We do appear to be o um, opening lower on, on the session, and if we do manage to drift further down from here, this blue line here, 
the 50 moving average at 2,947 might act as support. And we can see on a few occasions it acted as both support and resistance um, in the last few months. So it could be of a significant importance in, in potentially in the near term. If the wider upper trend does continue, and we look, and look to re and we kind of retake 3,000, we could be looking at retesting the all-time highs in around 3,028. While we've have had this uncertainty in stock markets, this is actually uh, one of the markets that has benefited from it has been the gold market. Uh, and the gold market at the very beginning of the month went on to hit a six-year high, which would be this price year up around 15.57 odd. Then we saw uh, a move to the downside. Uh, we, we saw uh, we saw better profit taking. We saw um, we saw the, mar the the metal fall back below the psychologically important 1500 metric. Um, but then, no, we have seemed to kind of have a, a from the bottom in around this area here, in around the kind of, tw sorry, 1485, 1484 region. Um, and essentially, we've been kind of pushing off that. And essentially, if you hold above this blue line here, the 50 moving average, which comes to play in at 1486, it's likely that the kind of wider upper trend is going to continue. And if you continue to press on higher from here, we could be looking heading up towards the recent highs of early September in around 1557-1556. Uh, if we do manage to turn lower on itself yet again, and we take off the recent lows here in round 84, we could then be looking heading back down towards 1480. And if we do have us as a break below 1480, it could take us back down towards this zone down here, somewhere in around between 1453 and 1430. So keep an eye out for that area if you have a break below 1480. Obviously, the oil market, uh, we saw major volatility in the oil market last week. And despite the fact that oil is well off the highs that were achieved at the beginning of last week, so the very, be yes, the very beginning of last week, we're still um, very much up on the last few weeks. So obviously, the, with the attack in Saudi Arabia, it led to the oil market opening on the early hours of uh, you know, Monday morning way, way up here, last Monday. Um, and then the market has been largely pushing lower um, in the last few sessions so we give we pull back most of the most of the ground uh, that was gained but still as long as we can hold as long as we can hold above this area here and we can hold above you know say between say 63 uh, if we hold above that say on the, it's a kind of 63 area or even the lows of last week around the 63 is about 30 if you hold above that it's likely that we could see the you know the, the more wide the more recent upward trend um from early august onwards can I continue and if you press it higher from here we could be looking at retesting 66, and then if we go beyond that, we could be looking heading up towards the $70 per barrel mark. On the flip side, moving to the downside, uh, back say below 63, could take us back down towards this blue line here, the 50 moving average, which comes into play at 51 spot 55, and a move below that, we could find support from down around here in around 60 bucks per barrel. That's a, a big psychological number, and it's something that traders often keep an eye out for. Take a look now at WTI. So the, uh, the chart pattern is very similar on WTI. So we had a big move to the upside, and then obviously we, we've seen a, a fair bit of the ground that was made uh, on that jolt higher um, being given up. But once again, if you hold above the truly moving average, this red line here, which comes into play in a 56 by 42, if you can hold above that, it's likely that. Um, that the kind of more recent upward trend of the last few weeks is going to continue. And if you do press on higher from here, keep an eye out for sixty dollars a barrel, big psychological level, big psychological number. If we go beyond that, we can then be looking at retesting the recent highs of in around sixty-three dollars per barrel. Uh, if you do have a fairly slight move to the downside, which takes out the trending moving average, we could be looking at, at uh, testing the late, sorry, the mid-September lows in around here in at fifty-four dollars per barrel. And then if you go below that. We could look ahead and back down towards $53 per barrel. Take a look now at what's going on on the currency market, starting off with the euro versus US dollar. I talked about how eurozone stock markets have been badly hit by the poor manufacturing and service figures out of France and Germany. Similar situation for the single currency. The euro has been very badly hit by those numbers and remains very much in the downward trend that has been in for quite some time. And it is worth noting though that we saw some pretty decent support in around this area, in around the kind of one spot 0926 area. I like to as a that, that area as, as a support on a couple of occasions. So if we do look to press on lower, that area could act as support. 
but on the flip, on, it's also noting if you do have a seismic break below that, that could that could be of a fairly like that's likely to be of a significant importance, and we could be looking heading back down towards 109 or 108. Uh, if you do manage to kind of hang on to these levels and we do kind of retake the 110 level on on, uh, on euro dollar, we could be looking at uh, heading back up towards this north of 111 here. And if you go beyond that, we could be getting like, targeting the late August high of in at one spot 11.64. And just finish up now, lastly, on the British pound. So pound dollar, um, so wider trend has been very much to the downside, but this candle here, uh, it's on the Tuesday the 3rd of September, on the, on the, on the daily candle, uh, looks to be a hammer formation, and we saw ever since then, we've seen a fairly decent bounce back in pound versus the, the, um, the US dollar. Granted, we, had a, we, had, we lost ground on Friday, and we're, we're in the red today, on the, on the account of broad dollar strength. But if you can hold above this this, yellow line, this blue line here, the 50 day moving average, which comes to play at 1 spot 22.75, if you can hold above that, we could see further gains be made on the pound versus the US dollar. And if you do press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting this region here in around 1 spot 26. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking heading up towards again, this area here in around 1 spot 28. On the flip side, if the market does manage to turn over on itself, and we do have a fairly sizable break below the 50 day moving average, we could be looking heading back down towards 1 spot 22, and a move below that could take us all the back down towards the 120 region. Uh, just before I go, um, for those of you that are based in the United Kingdom, and uh, for those of you that are, that are based uh, in around the, the kind of the West Midlands uh, of the UK, uh, there'll be an event on this week uh, in Birmingham, which will be hosted by myself. Uh, you can sign up for it on our website, cmcmarkets.com, under Insights, under Learn, Webinars and Events. This is the, uh, the area where you, where you sign up for, on, on which, sorry, this is, the, this is the page here. And the, uh, the event is on Thursday, the 26th of, of September in Birmingham, and it's at 18.30 British Summer Time is, the, uh, is when the event kicks off. And uh, if you have any comments to make on this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. Thank you very much.